all of you. A very warm welcome to today's webinar on teaching of computer science. The last few decades, we, the humankind has made marvelous, tremendous progress. And uh, it's mainly, it can be mainly ascribed and attributed to the development in the area of computer science. As computer teachers, you have a very big responsibility to instill a liking and uh, appreciation of the development that taking, that's taking place in the field of computer in the mind of our students. So we hope that today's webinar would be able to empower you for the, that. And uh, to start today's proceedings, I would like to request for uh, Regis Vergis, the principal of MGM High Secondary School, Bokaru, to accord a word of welcome. Good morning and warm greeting to one and all present here. I am being given the responsibility to welcome all of you attending this webinar. COVID-19 has ushered in setting a new normal from an abnormal lifestyle to a blended one as the coming reality. It has taught us to come together to relearn through collaborative effort. Today, we are dealing with one of the most important subjects, cyber security and scratch. The free flow of information and overuse of technology is resulting into cyber crimes. The scratch is a STEM based program language to teach computational thinking using a simple building block approach. Today, to deal with this subject, we have our resource person who is MCA from Charan Singh University, Meerut, and BA from Jammu University. He is the one who is going to lead us today uh, in our webinar. He is an education. He is in the educational field for the past 19 years as PGT Computer Science. Now he is associated with Kips Learning Private Limited as a computer science content editor. He is base, basically from Jammu region. He is none other than Abe Dogra, the resource coordinator of today's uh, webinar. We are extremely glad to have you, sir, as a resource person for today's webinar. On behalf of MGM Group of Schools and ASSES, I wholeheartedly welcome you, sir. His Grace Dr. Joseph Ma Dionysius is an eminent educationist, speaker, author, and a spiritual guru. He is the source of our inspiration and the patron of this series of collaborative efforts. I seek his blessings and welcome him to this webinar. Father Dr. Joshi Vargis, the Diocesan Education Officer of MGM Group of School, is a man of vision and an able administrator. He is one who, along with member of ASSES, collaborated with Father Francis, Director Schools, uh, School of Leaders, to organize a series of training sessions at this hour of crisis. I take this opportunity to welcome him to this webinar. Last but not the least, I welcome all fathers, sisters, principals, vice presidents, and teachers from MGM group of schools and ask us to show your interest in attending the webinar and be a part of this transitional change. I wish you all a wonderful session ahead. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. I welcome you all in this webinar. It's a very important webinar in the sense because we'll be discussing two very important topics here. But before I proceed, let me introduce to you what actually KIPS is. KIPS, as you know, KIPS Learning is a publishing company. And we have been into computers for the last 25 years. 
Uh, it has been a long journey. 25 years is quite good enough for a company who is only working on computers. I mean, we don't publish any other books. We just publish computer books only. So the focus has been from the beginning is to introduce computers as a tool and not as a subject. What I mean to say that we are trying, we try hard that computer should be taught as a tool to the students, not as a subject. Because when you tell the students that it is a subject and you need to score marks in it, it changes the whole scenario, it changes the whole thinking. So our aim, our motive is basically to teach computer as a tool, not as a subject. So that's why we are also serious about conducting these kind of webinars because whatever we learn from our R&D, we try and deliver it to the schools. So that is the more, uh, main focus of this workshop. And we'll be dealing with these two topics. One of both are important, but the first one is very important in the terms that we know internet is a very powerful tool. We all understand that, right? But then it is said, it is wisely said that with great power comes great responsibility also. And especially when this powerful tool comes in the hands of the students who are at the juncture where they are still developing, right? They are not in a stage that they can take their uh, own decisions independently. So being, being parents, being teachers, we have to take care of it, that how they should use this tool in a productive way. So this, these all things we'll be discussing with cyber uh, safety. And then we'll also be discussing uh, wonderful software that is widely appreciated and used by for students. Sometimes it becomes quite difficult because programming, as we know, is not that easy. It makes you think. It makes it challenges you, right? It is basically used for problem solving. And some of the students do feel that it is quite difficult. So to make programming easier for them, CBSC has inducted this software, wonderful software, Scratch. So we'll be discussing uh, different features of what Scratch is and how it is useful for the students. We'll be looking into different versions of Scratch, right? So this, is the main, this will be the main focus or agenda of this webinar. So to start with, I'll be starting with uh, cyber safety first, in which we'll be discussing different types of cyber safety or cyber threats. And then we'll be discussing how we can deal with it, how a school can deal with it, how the parents can deal with it, how a child can deal with it. Uh, being teachers, it's very important for you because I'm pretty sure that uh, in your school, students must be using internet, although maybe up to a limited extent, uh, but at your home, maybe your own children might be using internet also. So we'll be discussing all this. We'll be discussing about uh, the different types of cybersecurity threats and how to deal with it. So I would like you to just uh, hold on for a minute because I'll be sharing my screen with you. I have a presentation. I'll be sharing that presentation with you. Please hold on with it. Please let me know. So let's start with what uh, cyber safety actually is. Uh, well, we I told you in the introduction only that internet is a powerful tool, and almost everyone nowadays is using internet, especially uh, with development of uh, mobile technology. Now the mobile technology has uh, also come uh, far away. And uh, we, lots and lots, many people are using internet nowadays on mobile phones. And the students are also doing the same, right? But with it comes a lot many challenges because uh, we here will be dealing with uh, students who are at their teenage, right? And as we know, teenage is the age of uh, curiosity and fascination. And uh, since although internet, I must say that uh, mobile phones are quite powerful tools, effective tools because now see that during the lockdown phase also we are using it for learning. But when it comes to students, uh, we need to, we are a little concerned, we sometimes get little concerned. 
uh, and we need to keep a check also as to what they are doing or what they are up to. So we'll be dealing now with the, the different cyber security uh, fields and we'll be looking at the challenges that we might face because of it. So to start with, let's start with this small exercise here. You need to pick, I want the participation here. Uh, I want you to pick any first three technologies you feel that the students are using more often. They keep using any three technologies from this list. You need to uh, select any three technologies. Uh, any one of you can, uh, I would request Father Joshi if you can allow any one of uh, your teachers to uh, select uh, any three technologies out of the list and uh, then we'll have a small discussion on uh, what they feel, what they feel. They are typing in, they are typing in the chat box. Okay, so you need to Yeah, they, you, so some of you feel that Instagram is the first one and uh, YouTube and then some of you are saying YouTube, Facebook and Google. Okay, Instagram and YouTube, I can see a lot many people here have answered that most of the students, our students are using uh, Instagram and YouTube. Uh, of course, that's true. That's true, but it totally depends on... Uh, different students, by, I mean different uh, people and their priorities. But if you look into it that most of our students are using social networking sites. And social networking sites, when we look at the social networking sites, we feel that, okay, they are quite useful, but there are again few challenges, cyber security challenges related to using social networking websites. So in the next slide, we'll be discussing uh, a very important topic about perception, right? I have named it as, as Polis Giri. Now this again uh, requires your participation, teacher's participation, right? Now, we get, the students, they get lots and lots of friend requests, right? Social networking is full of friend requests. We all use Facebook, we use Instagram also, and we know that students and our children also, they get a lot of friend requests. But the problem with the friend request is, the first thing is, if you are not sure about the person, if you do not know the person personally, right, and if that person is sending a request to you or to your child, how would you evaluate that whether we should accept this request or not, whether the child should accept the request or the child should not accept the request. That is the main problem. That is the main concern. Now, if you are not with your child, if you are not with your student, most of the students accept the request in the sense that uh, in teenage, okay. there, there is a lot of peer pressure because if you ever get a chance to listen to the students that how they discuss you will often hear that they will say they will discuss the number of friends they have right it doesn't matter what kind of friends do they have but mainly what they do is they discuss with each other okay, okay I have these number of many uh, friends in my friend list and how many do you have so there is always a kind of competition there is always a kind of peer pressure among them that I should have more number of friends than the other student. Right, now in this case, what happened, the problem with this is most of the time they start accepting request of everyone, regardless of the point, whether they know that person personally or not. So the first thing that you need to make your students, your children aware of is that while accepting the friend request, the first thing that you should see is whether you know this person personally or not. If, if you don't, if your child doesn't know that person, but the person is known to you, is known to the parents, 
still it is okay to accept the request but if the request has come from someone whom you or your child or your student doesn't know at all then it's always better not to accept such kind of requests right this is the first thing that being a parent and being a teacher you need to take care of it right then you need to also look into the fake profiles now this is a art this is a art of detecting which profile is genuine and which profile is fake right it comes only from learning and we'll be discussing then this in the next slides that how we can detect which profile is fake and which profile is not fake well i do have a exercise for you people right in which you'll be doing all this but these two as far as the social networking websites are concerned these two points are very very and very important the first is which request should be accepted and which one should be rejected and the second is how to detect fake profiles right so now i have a small exercise here for you people we know that being adults uh we are quite aware we have the ability we have the ability to detect right we have intuition to detect a who is not uh, a correct person and who is a correct person we have this inbuilt intuition we humans we have this inbuilt intuition right so i want you people to just look at these pictures and you need to tell me which one of these is a criminal just by and then you have to give the reason also and you have to give the reason also please have a good look at these profile pictures here and you need to tell me which one of these can be or is a criminal not can be is a criminal right and you need to tell the reason also now uh, i want few participants for this because then only we can uh, solve this uh because i won't be telling you you have to use your own intuitions regarding this and with every person you select or every picture you select you need to uh, give a reason also that why do you feel that this person is a criminal right any anyone father if you could please help me with this anyone who can uh yeah either you can unmute or you can uh, type in yeah uh, anyone yes. who wish to answer this can unmute sir yes welcome welcome yes please sir good morning sir the profile pic which is uh, of dog uh, according to me it should it will be fake because uh, he or she is hiding the identity okay okay so uh, let me clear one thing with you here in this slide we are not detecting the fake profile uh, we what we are trying to do we are trying to find out using our intuitions we are trying to find out who is a criminal right who is a criminal fake profiles will come afterwards but in this slide what we are trying to get is who is a criminal i mean you just have to look at their faces or maybe the expression or maybe if you are good at reading the eyes you need to detect because being adults the purpose of this is that being adults we have very good intuition because with our experiences we have learned that who among these can be a criminal so anyone else hello okay yes sir yeah uh, sir uh, from my uh, concern i think uh, we can not identify who is the criminal here by face okay 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 so you mean to say it would be difficult yeah. to identify but yeah, i it is difficult to uh, yes yes okay 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 no issue no issue no issue with that okay uh, i i think most of most of the people might feel 
that the third person who is wearing sunglasses uh, might be a criminal, right? Uh, anyone yeah. else, if you want to answer? Okay, what about the person uh, in the top row last? Last person in the top row. Okay, uh, let me solve it for you because uh, I wanted a participation in this because uh, that would have made things easier for me. But okay, I'll do it for you. Let's suppose I take uh, the third person on, uh, on the top row because somehow I feel the facial expression and the glasses he's wearing um, kind of overall uh, personality. It gives a uh, image that he can be a criminal, right? He might be having a criminal record. The same goes for the next person. But, but, here let me tell you the truth is that this old lady has a criminal record, right? I've taken it from the web and she had a criminal record uh, and that she was involved in uh, a school firing, right? <clears throat> Not uh, gun, sh gun shooting. She was involved in the gun shooting in America. Now, the purpose of this slide was that even we, are, we people are adults, right? Our intuitions are strong, but still we also fail, right? We also fail in detecting that who among these is a criminal and who is not. But just imagine the teenagers, just imagine the teenagers, they have very less experience in their life, right? They, their intuitions are still developing. How they will be able to detect that who is good for them and who is not good for them. Since being adult now, we also realize that it's quite difficult, quite difficult to actually figure out who has a criminal record or who is a criminal here. So just imagine about your students, this thing about your students, about your children, that for them, for them, how difficult it would be to detect that who is a right person for them and who is wrong. The same is for accepting the friend request. Just by looking at the pictures, just by looking at the pictures, you cannot say who is good and who is not good. Right? So it, this all comes with this all comes with lot of practice. Right? So whenever your child or any student who is still in the school feels that he is getting or he or she is getting lots and lots of friend requests, then this is how you can suggest to them that just by looking at the pictures, don't go for it. Right? Find out if you or your parent or anyone from your family knows that person or not, right? If they know the person, then it's okay. If they do not know that person, do not accept any friend request from the strangers, right? Uh, let's, this was about accepting requests on social networking sites. I hope I've made this thing clear to you and what should be done. If a child approaches to you, if your own child or maybe a student comes to you and asks you uh, what needs to be done if you are getting lots and lots of friend requests. So this is, the, uh, this is the suggestion you can give to the child. The, another important uh, crime is cyberbullying. It comes first in my list because it's quite dangerous, it's quite critical also. Uh, I hope all of you understand what bullying is, right? Uh, according to the survey, according to a census, almost everyone in this world at some time in their life has faced some kind of bullying. And that's true also. Uh, we all are adults, right? Uh, we are teachers and if you look into your past experiences, you will also agree with this. Yes, in your life at any point in the past, you also must have been a target. You must have been bullied, right? It happens in the schools, it happens in the colleges, it happens in the uh, workplace also, right? We all face it. 
but let me tell you there was a lot of difference when somebody was bullied uh, i mean 10 or 20 years back it was quite different than uh, what is happening nowadays um, some of you will feel why i am telling you this and what is so uh, what is the difference i mean bullying is bullying it doesn't matter if somebody was a bullied 20 years back or somebody is being bullied now in the past if you look at the last 10 or 20 years internet was still not that popular and let's take an example if 20 years back is somebody in your class maybe you were studying in a the school then was uh, experiencing any kind of bullying then during during that incident that incident might have been observed by some 20 30 people right roughly maybe there are 40 students in your class and uh, somebody was getting bullied so just 20 30 people saw that incident right and they discussed it and soon they forgot it but now on social media our students basically have hundreds and hundreds of friends so if imagine a student is being bullied on the social networking site almost all the 600 or 500 people who are in the friend list are observing that incident right they are reading post on that person's profile that okay this particular child is being bullied and this is what has been told to her right it this can bullying can be in the form of comments right it can be uh, in the form of like uh, disliking anything or even they use emojis also to express their anger or maybe their frustration or anything so what i mean to tell you that since internet and social networking websites have gained lot of, lots and lots of popularity so any incident regarding bullying that happens to a child is known to some 500 or 600 odd people who are in the friend list of the child right so there is now more and more pressure there is now more and more embarrassment for that child i hope you all agree with this because i just now i told you some 10 20 years back this would have been a different story altogether maybe some 20 or 30 people might be knowing about that incident and soon they'll forget forget it right but now since we are in the era of internet we are in the era of social networking if anything if bullying happens to a child everyone in the circle of that child or in the friend list gets to know about that and that causes a big embarrassment for the child who is bullied right so i have few incident real life incidents here now this girl, Shawari Joshi, grade 7, uh, she was also bullied and she has had written this post. Now I would request all of you to, to just read this uh, so that you will get an idea that how serious it gets, right? Uh, she fought depression, she fought depression, she was in depression because of this, because of this cyber bullying. I hope we all know that how cyberbullying happens, right? When you post something, you get a lot of comments. Some of the comments are in favor, but there are many comments that will try to demoralize you, right? They would try to insult you in the form of writing comments or sometimes sending emojis. Now for a child, it's very difficult to handle all these things. We also face all this, we also face all this, but uh, since we are grown up, we know how to handle it. We handle it quite easily. But for a child who is in an age where already there are a lot and lots of confusion for the child, it's get quite difficult for the child to handle this situation. So uh, this girl says, I'll read it for you. Yes, I've been a cyber bullet. I use the Facebook and Instagram social networking site. I had posted a photos in a traditional dress, I received a lot of negative comments, even from my close friend. Many people posted comments saying that I am old fashioned person. Some of my close friends said that they had thought I had a 
good taste in fashion but now they realize that they had been wrong i was very really depressed right the first thing i did was i told my parents about this now this is very important very important thing for the parents and for the teachers the strictness is important right following rules and regulations is very important but being teachers being parents we should give some space to the child in the sense that the child should feel comfortable ki yes i can approach my teacher i can approach my parent and i can tell them about any problem whatsoever a problem i am facing i can consult or i can talk to my parents or i can talk to my teachers your personality should be such that if a child is facing any problem they should feel ki okay i can tell this to my teacher and i can tell this to my parent and they'll listen to me so please do not discourage a child if a child comes to you with a problem please do not discourage that child at all listen to the child listen to their problems right now here i have one more incident here malvika rajesh grade a she was also bullied again this also left her in depression and uh, the same almost the same incident right but again uh, the teachers were there to help right and the superiors i mean the administrative staff the principal and all helped her with the incident uh, so it's quite important right you can read it out and you'll feel that these in incident caused lots and lots of problem for the children right so first thing if you want to solve these problems you need to be aware of what the problem is and this is what actually i'm trying to explain here that cyber bullying is a very and a very serious crime very serious crime and if you feel in case any child any child is being harmed through cyber bullying it's very important that you approach the child and talk to the child i have seen i have observed that nowadays uh, many teachers are also into the friend list of the of their students right i don't think so there is any harm in doing that right uh, for that matter that gives this, this gives you a clear picture of what the child in your class is doing on the social networking websites right so let's suppose you have a, a student as a friend in your facebook account and somehow you have observed that the child is becoming uh, has been affected because of cyber bullying there is a incident right happening on the facebook or maybe on any social networking uh, site where the child is being targeted right so immediately what you have to do you need to take the child into your confidence and you need to talk to the child about it please do not ignore any such incident if you feel if you are scrolling through the post of any particular child who is in your friend list then if you feel that child is being targeted then it's important that you need to talk to the child first right or if you feel you cannot solve the problem on your own it's always good to talk to the administrators right take the child to the principal talk to the principal or maybe um i think all of the school nowadays they have a uh, very good school counselors it's important that you take the child to the school counselor and talk to the child if you do not have a school counselor then you can take the child to the principal if you feel you cannot solve the problem and if you feel that uh, the parents involvement is also very very important in these things because uh, there's hardly any case i think there is hardly any school in which students are uh, using social networking sites within the school most of the cases these type of thing happen when the students use internet or social networking site at their homes or maybe outside the school right then it is always good to involve the parents also in this right and in case you feel any child is being targeted immediately report it or maybe talk to the child then next is cyber stalking uh, well uh, cyber stalking is a crime in the sense that 
let's first of all understand what cyber stalking is now cyber stalking is basically when you take when a person follows you everywhere maybe he or she will follow you everywhere on the internet if you have a account on instagram then that person is there if on facebook then he or she is there snapchat yes of course he or she is there i won't say that following a person is cyber stalking but if you are following that person everywhere and you are just putting up negative comments for that person everywhere on every social networking platform then it becomes cyber stalking let me clear this once again that cyber stalking does not mean that a person is following you or is a is sending friend request to you on every social networking platform the problem comes when the person is following you everywhere and then is also posting negative remarks about you then it comes under the category of cyber stalking some of these comments are uh, quite offensive they are quite serious right they are being de deliberately posted to put down your confidence or the confidence of the child then in that case this becomes cyber stalking and it's a serious crime let me tell you now again the problem being grown ups we know how to deal with it the best thing is first of all uh, avoid the people you don't know personally right do not accept their friend request at all but uh, i told you in the beginning only that children's don't do it they usually accept request from everyone feeling that it will be good for them if they have more and more number of friends uh, in their friend list right because this is what they like but in case in case if you feel that a person unwanted person is following the child everywhere in every account then then uh, and uh, that person is also maybe uh, spreading rumors by putting up the comments or maybe trying to defame the child somehow or trying to put down the moral uh, sorry confidence of the child then in that case this becomes a crime cyber stalking and then again the same thing you need to do is you need to uh, talk to the child about this you need to if you feel that the child is uh, not somehow feeling comfortable about it then again the school counselor is there now if you have a school counselor in your school or group of schools then i would suggest you that it's always good to keep a school counselor and the school counselor should know about cyber safety and the threats related to it i mean they should be trained about it right then the school counselor can talk to the child then the principal is always there and if you feel still the problem is not being solved involve the parents right have a meeting and uh, tell them about the incident right so i have already explained to you what actually cyber stalking is right uh now sextortion is also a a crime now first of all let's understand what it is right in friends but sometimes it happens that they are also involved in chatting right now chatting as far as chatting is concerned it's not i cannot say that it's always harmful right it's quite useful also because it helps you in keeping in touch with your friends it also helps you in keeping in touch with your family and other members right but sometimes what happens is students are involved in sexting now let's understand what is sexting sexting is basically sending and receiving sexual content from users in social networking website it can be any website it can be facebook it can be instagram maybe an app like whatsapp right so this is what sexting is sending and receiving of sexual content it becomes a crime when there is no consent involved right 
for a child who is less than 18 years right uh, it is already an offense it comes under the category of an offense but for adults also let me tell you if you are receiving any such content without your con consent on it then also it becomes a crime let's say there are two person a and b now a is sexting to b but b is not ready he or she has not given the consent then also it becomes a crime right so we'll be dealing with this topic now now you have understood what sex sexting is basically and uh, why is it considered a threat for the child is basically what happens generally what they do is they first of all they keep sending and receiving uh, these kind of messages but then suddenly sometimes what happens is they start blackmailing each other for this maybe one student will blackmail or threaten the other student that if he or she may, um, will not favor the other person with maybe some money or anything like that or a gift then that person or will leak all the messages on the or will upload all the messages on the social networking websites so that the other students will also get to know that you were involved in sexting uh, and in return they blackmail the other child the blackmail the child or they ask for some favors that are quite difficult for the child right many of the students many of the students land into these situations now we need to take care of this we need to see if a child is involved in sexting or not right now how to check that it's quite difficult to check right uh, but the main thing is you need to see when your child is using your mobile phone at what time of the day the child is using the mobile phone right and to whom the child is chatting that's very important you should being a parent or if uh, you are a teacher also if you feel any of the student is involved in chatting most of the time you should know that at what time the child is involved in chatting right makes use of the chat app and to whom uh, he or she is talking to using the chatting apps that's very important because sometimes we get complaints being teacher we may get complaints ki our child to keeps using mobile phone at night time maybe after 12 also doesn't sleep right then it gets very important that you intervene and you ask the child that uh, what kind of uh, app they are using and to whom they are talking right Uh, i think the parent would be the best one to ask this because in some of the cases it happens that uh, they the students they give excuses say i was talking to my classmate so in that case the parent what the parent can simply do is the, what they can do is they can simply ask the other parent right whether your child is also talking or chatting to my uh, child so just by talking to the other parents the parent would get to know whether the child is talking to that particular child or is talking to someone else or chatting with someone else right so in any case you have to make uh, a point here that you need to keep a check on the child that if the child is using the chatting apps at what time they are doing it and to whom they are chatting with whom they are chatting that's very important that's very important now this is a data that shows that almost 70 lakh 50000 people are looking for sex online with children so that that uh, this is quite dangerous this is quite dangerous because many of the adults and fully grown up people are looking for sex online especially with the children right and that's a quite quite a dangerous figure okay so that's why it's important that you need to keep a check now the check should be in such a way that you do not have to threaten the child all the time and now technology has become so important that you cannot discourage the children all the time you cannot tell them all the time ki okay no don't use the mobile phone don't use the internet uh, that you cannot stop them but it's always important that you need a indirect check 
that what your child is doing indirect in the sense that uh, it will be good if you do not make the child uh, aware of it that you are keeping a check on the child right but we as uh, grown ups we know how to track how to track how to uh, keep an eye on our on our children right now but the problem doesn't stop here it's not about uh, chatting sexting or maybe uh, social networking there is another problem our children are facing and it's very dangerous that is playing games online playing games is not bad right but not bad in the sense that if they are playing games that help in their in the in the development of their brain maybe a child likes to play chess or maybe he likes to play any other uh, games that involve uh, solving something solving complex problems then it's good right but there are few games that are quite dangerous and very dangerous for our children so we will be discussing these games and the students also like playing these games they play these games without letting the parents or the teachers know about it because again curiosity is the main uh, problem here yeah. because students at this juncture they are very curious they want to know everything all about that what kind of game is it and uh, how to use it right now here is a game that became very popular among the teenagers and it was also banned in india and across the world i hope you must have heard of this game it was called do will right where a challenge was thrown to the participants mostly students or mostly teenagers and they were told to perform a particular task first in the beginning the task was quite easy then the level is raised to a level that in the end a child commits is forced to commit suicide right uh, quite a dangerous they lure the child into playing game the tasks are very easy in the beginning right then they lay, raise the level let's suppose they'll tell the child to climb a wall <coughs> which is 4 feet tall right the child knows i can do it easily so once the child clears one level they'll tell the child okay in the second level you have to climb a wall which is maybe 10 feet the child does it and then they in the end they tell the child okay, okay now climb the fourth floor of a building and jump from it right these kind of incidents have happened right and um, this is also this picture also a quite disturbing picture but i had to put this uh, because i want to show you the seriousness here okay. this is also a challenge given in this game to the students that you with a using a blade you need to draw this in your arm so quite risky because many of the students many of the children have died because of this game and thankfully finally the government took a decision uh, that this game has been banned but here the purpose is to tell you that they are sometimes into playing these kind of dangerous games my these are some of the games uh, that are quite popular with the students uh, with the children uh, please have a good look at it because if you feel that any child is playing uh, in these games you need to talk to that child right uh, i'll be discussing some of the games here snuff run is a game where you the child is asked to torture a person sexually assault a person or torture a person right it's called man hunt uh, again i'm showing you these games it's uh, available on playstation because to make you aware that if you feel any child may be at your home or maybe in your surrounding neighbors or maybe in the school is playing these games then you need to talk to that child immediately right now uh, bully is also a game uh, again xbox one may it's available now although not a indian version but uh, it's very popular among the teenagers where a uh, teenager is asked to bully everyone in the school including the principal and the teachers right the first thing is they play it as a game then it becomes a habit i mean they are shown a environment of a school where you 
where where you are a character and then you have to bully everyone around you right you need to bully everyone around you including your classmates your teachers and the principal and the management everyone now once this becomes a habit they get addicted to the game this becomes a habit and you may never know that after learning all these things bullying and all from the game they also try to do it in the real life right so you need to take care of this that uh, another quite uh, popular very popular in fact i'll not say quite it's very popular is grand theft auto many students play it now this text that i had written here is very important it will here it will clear it will give you a clarity on how dangerous these games are right so here is an incident real life incident that this young man named paul vecchino hailed from bangkok uh, he was habitual right he was addicted to playing this game and just see what had happened to him in the real life in 2008 a young man named paul vecchino hailed a bangkok taxi and when it was time to pay for his ride instead of paying for his ride he pulled out a knife and stabbed the driver to death now when the cops picked him up chino blamed grand theft auto for his violent action saying killing seemed easy in the game and he needed the money to play it now just imagine he was killing people he was taking people under his car and everything in the game all right so after the game level it was okay fine it's a game we can say that but when the same thing same thing is done same action is performed in the real life scenario then it becomes a crime now uh, here in the game he felt that since killing people seems so easy so i can kill the people in real life scenarios also right so the, he felt that they will not feel any pain since people in game don't feel any pain so same here even if i stab someone it won't hurt anyone so they become so habitual they become so addicted to the game that they fail to realize that there is a clear difference between a game and a real life scenario so this is what this is what the consequences are so we need to take care of this we need to see that if any of the child is getting addicted is playing these games more often then again you need to counsel that child because otherwise a stage will come where they'll fail to understand the clear difference between the gaming world and the real world right carmageddon again a game where you have to run uh, your car on the people you have to kill as many as people by taking them or running away your car on and you have to crush people with the car now this was uh, again uh, they thought that it's quite funny but it's a quite addicted and uh, quite a dangerous game in the sense that uh, the teenagers it's very popular among the teenagers where you have to click your picture right and for clicking the picture the first thing that you need to do is you need to fall from anything right the picture should be such that in the picture you should be falling from something right it can be from uh, from the car it can be from the stairs or anything uh, quite dangerous because many students have got hurt while playing these games these kind of games uh, mainly two people are involved in this the first one will fall from uh, anything any uh, building or anything uh, and the other person will take the picture right so quite popular among the teenagers but dangerous also because many incidents have happened where students were seriously injured so what they do is they click the picture and post it on the web <coughs> this so i think every one of you must be knowing it pubg very popular nowadays very popular nowadays but it it is creating a lot of problem as you can see the text here again a real life incident i have put a uh, boy uh, played the game continuously for 45 days right and he suffered from serious neck pain and died in the hospital 
right he became so addicted to the games that he played the game for i mean 45 days straight away and he suffered serious neck injuries because of this and died in the hospital so again in the same problems i showed you these games to make you aware that if you feel that any child is becoming addicted to these kind of games then immediately counsel that child talk to that child involve the parents also it's very important to involve the parents that the parents should also know should be aware of because um, the tragedy i i won't say it's a kind of tragedy but say it's, it's an irony where uh, still there are families where the children are uh, technologically they are quite skilled technically they are quite skilled but the parents doesn't know anything about technology and this is where the problem comes right if a parent doesn't know about the technology then uh, the children they feel that i we can fool the parents right they won't get to know what we are actually doing whenever they are asked what they are doing for us on the mobile phone why they keep sitting in the on the uh, with the mobile phone or with their laptops on they will also always give an excuse that i'm just studying or uh, i'm completing my project or anything like that but we know it hardly happens sometimes so it's very important that the parents also should be aware of what is going around uh, they should be aware of the technologies and being teachers also it is very important for you because if you will go and get to know okay, what are all the threats then only you can safeguard the students right another problem that many uh, students face is uh, if a teen does not get enough like it's a social suicide now teenagers i told you in the very beginning they are always uh discussing this thing that if they are posting anything on the internet how many likes they are getting and the problem is likes is okay but when they do not get sufficient likes or according to your uh, according to their choice they feel that they are being isolated they are being rejected and it sometimes causes them to commit suicide or social suicide and uh, parents are overwhelmed by technology another problem i told you just now they all parents also sometimes what they do is they keep using technology up to an extent that they forget their parental duties right uh, they are hardly aware of what their child is up to especially when they are using mobile phones or when they are using internet they themselves are engrossed so much engrossed in the technology while using mobile phones and internet that they forget to keep a check on their own children right so if you want to discourage your child see using technology is not bad i am not telling you that you should tell all the children not to use the technology because it's quite important nowadays you cannot uh, live with it and i mean you can live with it of course but then there are few difficulties that are faced because the world is like that technology is very important you need to use it but your mobile phone never tells you never tells you you to use it for 24 hours or maybe 4 uh, 5 hours in a day right aapka mobile phone aapko kabhi nahi bolega uth ke ki mujhe use karo it never happens right so the decision is always yours the decision is with the parents also if you tell the children if you give an impression to the child ke we use being parents or being teachers we use technology only when it is required then the child will also feel the same right now children take advantage of parents limited focus lack of technical accumulation i have already discussed this point with you ah uh, this is quite important i i hope i know you must be facing this problem also parents assume it is the school's responsibility to look into the child internet habits many parents feel that we leave the child with the school and the child is there with the school for 6 to 8 hours and when the child is in the school we don't know what is happening with the child it is the sole responsibility of the school to uh, take care of the child look into everything that the child is doing 
but we know that practically that's not true yes of course the child is there for 6 and 8 hours but after that what the child is doing that is not the responsibility of the school not the responsibility in the sense because it's very difficult to keep a check keep a track on what the child is doing after the school hours right so it's not that it is the only responsibility of the school i would say both parents and the school have need to coordinate with each other in the sense that if the if the teacher feels that the child is up to something then it, that should be informed to the parents and if the parents feel that the child is creating a problem or giving excuses right uh, then they also need to talk to the uh, school uh, example can be like many students what they do is they keep using internet late night and when the parents ask what they were doing they keep telling ke uh, we, uh, i mean i'm working on a project maybe or a the homework has been given by the teacher and the teacher wants me to finish it by tomorrow so i need to submit that right but if if you feel your child is giving any such kind of excuse directly what you can do is you can call up the school next day and you can ask the school teacher or maybe anyone uh, the class teacher that whether such kind of project or homework has been given by the teacher or not right so you will get to uh, know Uh, that what exactly is happening why the child is uh, working with the computer late nights right so the coordination between the parent and the school here is very important now uh, since we know social networking is also a threat to the national security nowadays many groups have been formed right and uh, many <coughs> sorry many groups have been formed and there are many social network sites that are promoting contents like this which are anti national some of the terrorist organizations are also using social media to promote their uh, philosophy that goes against the nation and you need to keep a check again here also that any child or maybe any uh, teenager or maybe any child from your home is not indulging or into all these things that uh, he or she has joined a group that is anti national group right now 90% of the sexually abused children are abused by someone they know uh, that again is a serious problem here uh, now that abuse can be also uh, by using the internet right i told you about cyber stalking i told you about cyber bullying right i told you about sexting also it usually happen that these kind of abuses sexting and all comes from the people who who know your child personally so again i have given i have talked uh, talk to you a great deal about this that how we can keep a track on the child's habit of uh, what they are up to uh, dear teachers as uh, we wait for sir to rejoin uh, i think uh, he has lost the connectivity uh, i want to share a couple of things with you hope i'm audible to you yes, yes sir okay uh, see uh, while visiting the classes uh, especially the computer classes i have observed at least uh, in some of the schools our priority what's our priority while taking Uh, computer lessons you can just type in what's our objective of uh, taking computer science in the, in the school hope uh, you have heard my question what's our priority what's the objective of taking computer uh, science yeah, making children uh, technologically savvy make them aware of the technology okay so uh, that's true so uh, often we are under the pressure to complete our course portion right and uh, normally uh, about uh, two uh, lessons or two periods are given to uh, each i have seen that the prior teachers prioritize to finish the portions in time 
So they go on and go on with the, uh, the theory lessons. How would it, uh, uh, if we, if you are given a chance to um, take on driving lessons or say uh, lessons of uh, to be a pilot, someone offers you a lesson on uh, to be a pilot online and uh, gives an option, how, would, how many of you would be joining? Many of us might be joining. And uh, after the exams, you might also get good grades. But would that make you eligible to fly a, pl a, fly a plane or flight? Suppose you have attended an online course on uh, uh, being a pilot and you have uh, uh, got good grades. Would, does that make you eligible to fly a plane? No. Unless you won't get a hands on training, right? So, uh, my request to all the principals and all the teachers is to ensure that, that students are being taken to the computer labs. And the theory lessons also you can take in the computer lab itself. Some of the schools they have the uh, whiteboards, they some have the interactive uh, boards. Uh, some have the projectors. If not, you can tell your principal about the requirement and let, let that be there. In that way, uh, you, you can take the theory also in the computer lab. The students should be in the lab and they should have an hands on experience. It's very unfortunate that even at the end of the year, uh, especially the, the lower kids, I mean, lower classes, uh, class one or two, uh, they are, I mean, they won't get much chance to try the skills on the computer. So uh, make it a point that you take the kids for theory as well as practical and uh, let them give them ample opportunity to exp exp experience the teaching on the computer to experiment with that. Uh, some of the teachers they say uh, we don't, don't take them often because uh, they might do something with the keyboard or the mouse and it won't uh, it will affect the uh, working don't worry about that the school would take care about that but it's your responsibility that it's handled properly as a teacher you need to ensure every child gets an opportunity to handle the computer and it's handled properly it should not be uh, handled uh, without any attention so uh, hope uh, from this session onwards, when the kids are back in the school, you would make a point that kids are taken to the... How many of uh, us are in the regular habit of making lesson plans? I hope uh, most of you are. Uh, some of the publishers, they also provide uh, a model of the lesson plans, but I would rather advise you to make your own lesson plan. That would give you some time to plan your lesson. And you can also uh, learn, I mean, you can uh, invest in, in that, how I can enrich the experience of my students. Instead of copying some, something someone had uh, written somewhere, you try to uh, invest your energy, your passion, your knowledge, and your skills to make your class an impressive and effective one. It teaches it's not just about uh, attaining some marks or grades. See, after the exams, after one year, after a few months, no one is going to ask a student how much mark did you get in computer class. They would ask, are you able to do this? Are you able to uh, do this uh, in, uh, in the Excel? Or can you uh, make a document for me? Can you create a website? Because the, the students also uh, can take the skills to home and they can help their parents. They can. Uh, in this uh, uh, age, uh, go for artificial intelligence and other, other lot, lot of avenues are there. So it's you who are, uh, are there to build a platform them, for them. It's not about uh, the grades or marks. It's important uh, while you make the progress report. But give more emphasis to hands-on training. And the proper lesson plans should be there, which would help you to ensure that you are in line. And also check with the lesson plan. Are you going in accordance with the lesson plan? And while making the lesson plan, uh, think about what's the objective of this particular lesson. 
and uh, uh, some of i mean most of you have also got uh, ba training and uh, some of the computer teachers may not be uh, having that ba experience but i would rather advise uh, you not to jump into the lesson straight away uh, i've seen teachers yeah. in the classes uh, telling the uh -huh. student open the book page number so and so like uh -huh. windows or operating system the child might be uh, hearing these words for the first time in their life they may not be able to they might not be knowing about operating system or some other jargon that you are familiar with we often i have seen we often deal with the students with an uh, understanding that what i know they also know then they, they don't know about that uh avesara has joined so uh, i would leave uh, uh, we have a exercise here now now there are a few pictures here given here right you need to identify which one of these is of cyber bullying password spoofing cyber bullying i have already told you what it is you need to identify which one of these so uh, dear teachers uh, we were discussing about uh, the importance of uh, taking students to the practical i mean to the computer lab to give them hands on training so you have promised that uh, you would ensure to give uh, practical training along with, uh, along with the theory so kindly uh, make that a point and follow it religiously and the preparation that we need to make for the computer classes like uh, making of uh, the lesson plan and uh, other other preparations again uh, the topic which uh, sir was discussing today about the uh, cyber security i think uh, uh, it won't be a waste if you take at least uh, one or two periods uh, either online or offline when the classes begin or during your online classes to uh, carry this message to the teachers during uh, the staff meeting with the permission of your principals we can have a, a session on the cyber safety and the security issues the computer teachers you can uh, take that uh, class for uh, your colleagues in your school uh, make it uh, uh, one or two uh, days presentation because uh, these issues are not just uh, faced by the children even the adults are, i mean they fall vulnerable Uh, recently i heard that uh, a, a person uh, lost uh, lakhs of rupees uh, she didn't do anything she just clicked on some of the messages sent by a stranger who uh, uh, sent a facebook request uh, that person was accepted as a friend and unfortunately uh, she was not that uh, uh, technically savvy and uh, the links which Uh, he had sent she clicked on that and uh, after few days she came to know that lakhs and lakhs of rupees were taken away from uh, her account so it's not just about uh, an issue being faced by our teenagers or our students even the uh, teachers even the adults even uh, i mean our parents they face this issue so uh, you can uh, carry today's teaching to your home uh, you can uh, talk about these issues uh, which you have learned and what are the remedial measures uh, inform your family first then your kids uh, your, uh, your students and also the fraternity the teaching fraternity uh, do you want to share uh, any of your experiences or uh, any of any of the success that you success stories that you uh, had in your classes either online or offline any of the teachers uh, you, would you like to share for the challenges that you face especially uh, the challenges that you face while transacting uh, computer classes online one of you can unmute and uh, share your experience
understand that which student is understanding properly who is not understanding even the students are, are not telling to us that the topic is not clear to them then also we are able to understand that this student is not able to understand this topic so we are trying to make them understand by giving the different examples so only one this problem i am facing means i am realizing that i am trying to overcome from this type of Things that facial expression I am not able to see because all the time students are not switching on their video. Only uh, that problem. Are you talking about the online classes? Online classes only, sir. Otherwise, no okay, problem. Okay, ma'am. Have... Uh, we are also not able to see you now. Yeah. Huh? We are also able, not able to see you right now. You so, are not uh, able to. Yeah. Before uh, starting the class, make it a point that. all the students should uh, put their videos also on so that you can see them and uh, give this instruction yes. to hand and inform the parents as well and tell them if it's not audible and it's not visible uh, they might be removed from the class i mean the online session that that's taking place there sometimes what happens sir the connectivity problem or this type of problem coming that's why they are not switching on video but uh, that type of problem i am over trying to overcome from that uh, later on i am asking from them that if you have okay. any problem uh, solution if you have band bandwidth the problem the uh, way we try we are trying here on the chat they can reply yeah you yeah can, actually sir this is my question we can reply you can take the name of the particular child ask him to uh, give the reply in the chat box in that that's a way to ensure yeah. their participation yeah i am doing all these things but this problem just i am realizing that i have shared with you yes yes see okay. uh, technology helps us a lot but at the same time uh, it also bring uh, along with the opportunities some of the challenges as well so uh, see this is one of the challenges uh, we were having a wonderful session but due to the connectivity issue uh, we are not able to go ahead just now i have the uh, typed in a, a youtube account uh, this is the youtube account of our uh, mpn purpan which is official uh, youtube channel of our group all the recordings of uh, these webinars uh, this is the 11th webinar uh, in this series all the recordings would be uploaded uh, in this youtube channel you can kindly subscribe to that channel so that whenever the recording supposed that you would be notified away sir yes sir yes yes for all sorry it's all because of this network connectivity so um, now we have discussed all the games right uh, that are kind of threat for the students now here is a small exercise we'll quickly uh, go through this here are a few pictures right taken from uh, the internet and you need to find out which one of these is an incident shows an incident of cyber bullying password spoofing fake profile and phishing now let me uh, solve this for you because this would help you also the first one if you see here there are a lot many negative comments written here so automatically when you look at this you can see that this is 
this shows an incident of what cyberbullying looks like right this is an example of cyberbullying the second one you can see here where the user is being asked to type their uh, user id and password with the captcha given over here now this is an example of password spoofing now let me tell you what password spoofing is here again the user is asked for the credentials like user id and the password but the web page here is a fake web page now how would you get to know that this is a fake web page reason being it looks quite similar to the google web page right for detecting a fake web page the first thing you need to do is in the address bar check the url right the url should start with the https right s means security so first thing if you are using a secure site for any transaction or for sending messages the first thing you need to check that that in the address bar the url must start with a https if it is a http only or something else then you need to check whether you should add your credentials or you should not uh, in fact i would suggest that you should not submit your credential in these kind of websites that do not have https protocol right the third one here is a fake profile we all know julia roberts uh, and if you look at this picture here this is not the picture of julia roberts here so from just by looking at the picture and the information given given here if you feel that there is anything fishy about it now here the text might be showing that it belongs to julia roberts but the picture uh, on the profile is not of julia roberts so you can see here this is a fake profile and then we have an incident of phishing here shown here picture four which show that if you fill in your password details or credentials you will be given access to netflix right 24/7 which we know that is not possible because netflix does not give any such kind of offers to its customers so this is how you can detect different kind of crimes related to cyber safety right uh, the first thing is you need to understand what these things are what is cyber bullying what is password spoofing what is um, your uh, uh, this uh, stalking also cyber stalking also phishing also once you are aware of it then just by looking at these kind of incidents on the web you will get to know a what is wrong for the child and what is good for the child right if only the teachers are aware or the parents are aware then they would be able to tell it or uh, make the students understand about the threats right on the internet now here is a small link uh, you can explore this this is about the cyber crime laws in india let me tell you in the year 2000 government of india has passed a law where cyber crime is also considered as a criminal offense right gone are the days when before 2000 you can do anything on the on the web you can send any kind of message you can do cyber stalking you can do cyber bullying there was no problem with it because the police had no law enforcement related to it right so the police was helpless in those cases earlier on but now we have a strong in india we have very strong cyber laws you can go to this link and you can see this video given here the link is given here and you can understand that what cyber crimes are the punishments are different most of the time the punishment is basically 2 years of imprisonment and depending upon the seriousness of crime the fine can be up to 2 lakhs and more than that right now how we can help the students especially those who are addicted to these type of games and these type of websites the first thing is that the parent parents and the teachers need to understand that instead of uh, encouraging the children or giving time to the children to spend more and more time on the mobile phones it's always good that you give them a habit 
that you tell them that they should read more and more books. This will only happen when the parents and the teacher will uh, do the same first, right? Because this will give an impression to the students that if my, if my parent is not doing it, is not using the mobile phone all the time, if my uh, teachers are into books, reading books and all, then they will also follow me. But if we keep on using all these technologies all the time, all the time, and we become habitual to it, then the parent and then the students will also follow the same, right? So avoid this. And then in uh, in serious cases, if there is uh, challenges, there are challenges, and you want to de-addict any student, then in metros there are a lot many de-addiction programs being run by various NGOs where uh, they have a de-addiction center and they try that the student or maybe any child or any person for that matter is taken to these de-addiction centers and uh, they help the child uh, with de-addicting. Right? Uh, awareness by means of proper training in the school. Now I would recommend this, I can only recommend this, I can recommend this to you because I've been into teaching and um, I've taught in different schools for the last 18 years. Uh, so I can tell you, being a teacher also, I can tell you what you can do is in your assembly, maybe you can ask any child or your computer HOD or maybe the computer teachers can team up and can give a workshop like this in your school, right? Just to make aware the students about the threats of uh, internet, right? Same, you can also call the parents of the students to your school and you can also share uh, this presentation or maybe you can deliver this presentation in front of them so that they also get to know about all the serious threats, right? The next part is, if you look into this, now this is very important, this is quite serious in the sense that uh, I hope you all know what exactly this is, right? This here is a text box we all use, right? This is for writing queries in the Google. And uh, what is the purpose of putting this on my slide here? Well, this is an exercise you people can do very easily. Now, after this workshop, when you sit uh, with the laptop or maybe uh, with the computer or you might be using your mobile phone, do this exercise. What you have to do is in the Google text box, just type your name, right? Type your name and see what kind of information is available about you on the internet. Why this is important is, the reason is after a few years, maybe your own children and maybe your grandchildren will also put in your name in this text box and will try to try to see what kind of information is available about you. Now, in the beginning, this seems uh, quite easy, but this is quite serious in the sense that uh, if let's suppose after maybe 10, 20 years, your child or maybe your grandchildren put your information, put your name in the Google box, and they find some information that might be embarrassing for you, then how serious the consequences would be, you can understand this. So this clearly means that even if you are using internet, you need to use it very cautiously, right? Do not share any kind of information on the net that might cause embarrassment for you, right? Now, uh, let's quickly uh, review some of the important uh, precautions, I would say, precautions that you need to take care of while surfing the internet. The first thing is you do not need to put your personal information online. Try to share minimum, minimum possible amount of personal information about yourself and about your family, right? This is the first thing you need to take care of. 73% of the teens often share their personal information on the net and 60%, 68% sorry, of young adults also share their personal information on the internet, which is not good, right? You can see that the young adults are not far behind, right? 
so we should take care of it only we, if we will take care of it then our students will also follow us to so try to avoid sharing personal information like your uh, phone numbers or family members phone numbers and all that address your address or your family members address avoid that phone safety nowadays we are using phone for everything for every little transaction we are using uh, phones nowadays right which is um, has become a very important tool in our day to day life some of us are also using it for storing our personal information personal pictures we are also using it for uh, various transactions related to the bank so first thing that you need to do is you need to take care of your phone security right uh, put a good pin a pin that cannot be guessed or a pin uh, maybe a if you have a good phone phone uh, face detection is also very useful or pattern lock is also very useful this is the first thing you need to take care of right now uh, tell the students nothing is free nothing is free in this world especially on the internet if anybody tells the child that i'll be giving you free uh, services for uh, if you give me that or anything for that matter the child is asked for tell the students make it clear in their mind that nothing is free on the web right although many companies many uh, organizations do offer free services but these organization and companies are very popular like if uh, maybe facebook comes up with an idea of a free service we know, all know facebook very well but if a new website that has not been used by many people comes up with the idea that we give free, these free things to this uh, to the children right if the children give us this or that so that is not a good idea make the students aware of it that nothing is free now uh, this is quite important what if your account is hacked by any chance then the first thing you need to do is the very first thing you need to do is inform everyone in your group that your account has been hacked now how would you get to know that your account has been hacked you won't be able to log in right using your credentials credential here means the user id and password if you feel you have not forgotten your uh, email id and password it is correct and still you are unable to log in after trying again and again so there is every possible chance that your account is hacked and if somebody has hacked your account then it is also possible that the other person is using your account for uh, sharing uh, information your rumors against you or maybe sharing uh, offensive comments or pictures that are that won't be liked by others so the first thing you can do in this case if you feel your account is hacked immediately inform try to inform all the people that are in your friend list by some other means maybe you can call them maybe you can use the whatsapp and immediately inform that that your account is hacked and whatever information maybe they are receiving from their from this account does not belongs to you since your account has been hacked this is the first thing you can do password making good password is very important very very crucial the password should should be such that it should not be predictable it should be unpredictable and one more thing is important that do not try to make password that are so complex that you on your own forget it right so password should be such it should be easy to remember and then of course it should be unpredictable so sometimes people keep passwords like this also they do it let me tell you seriously some of the people uh, use passwords like these these are not recommended at all i told you the password should be such yes it should be easy so that you can uh, remember it quite easily and uh, it should not be such that anyone can guess it and then your account will be hacked two step verification is very important google makes use of it if you go to gmail settings you will find this uh, two step verification where you are asked to enter a otp also right password and then a otp also so if 
you feel that your information is important, uh, it is sensitive, then it's always uh, important that you use this two-step verification of your Gmail account. Change, keep changing your password more often, right? Keep changing your password more often. Uh, do not keep the same password for too long. Uh, maybe after a month, you can change it. And if you feel you want to change it after two weeks, that is also okay. But keep changing your password. That will help you. Uh, that will uh, keep your account secure. Now, if you feel that your account, from your account, somebody has sent a phishing uh, link, maybe your friend calls you back and tells you that he or she has received a phishing link. Phishing, I hope you understand, where a mail is sent to uh, somebody asking for money. Uh, maybe you might have got some mails stating that you have a, won a lottery of many million dollars and in return uh, you have to pay this much of money. These are examples of phishing. So if your friend tells you that they have received a phishing link from your email ID, then you should uh, ask the office your friend to reshare it with you so that you also get to know it may be somebody else is has hacked into your account or maybe is using your account and is sending these phishing links. Right? So in case you receive any kind of your friend receives any such kind of information, ask them what kind of information has been received, what kind of link has been received. Tell them to share it with you. Virus scanning is very important. Uh, your virus should always be updated. And back up your file in case there is every possible chance when you are on internet, your system might get affected with a virus, a deadly virus that may delete your files. Right? So it's always important to keep the backup. There are many free services nowadays um, provided by Google, right? Uh, like uh, Google Drive and all are there. You can always back up your file, keep a backup of your files on the Google Drive. Or maybe if you can buy some space on the cloud, that is much better because cloud services also provide a lot of security features. Now here again is a small exercise. I'll tell you this will give you an idea how to create a strong password. Now here I have information about four different people. Right? The information is their name, their age, their date of birth, the card ribbon, their favorite color, their PAN number, and their birthplace, right? Now, based on, in this, on this information, we have to create a strong password. <clears throat> now, I would have, uh, uh, I'll give you a small example of how it can be done. Let's take this fourth row, Renal 38, this thing. Now, we can, what we can do is we can take maybe uh, information from here, like uh, Mirnal, 3881 Patna, right? Now this is a not so strong password. So the best way of doing it, what you can do is, now Mirnal, name of course, we all know our name, right? Easy to remember. We can always change our age. Let's say it's 38, so in place of 38, you can just take eight, right? So Mirnal eight. And then from your DOB, maybe you take your uh, last digit of your year, maybe one. So now the password here is Mirnal81, right? And let's suppose you, your favorite color is white, so you can put white there. So Mirnal81 white will be the password. So this way, now this password would be easy for you to remember, right? Because we all know Names is not, uh, we cannot forget our name. And then age also is quite easy, but we have taken one digit from it. Year also is quite easy to remember, so we can take one out of it. And then a favorite color also, we don't forget. So we can mix up the information, what I mean to tell you. We can mix up the information in such a way that the password becomes strong also. We get a strong password and uh, it's easy to remember also, right? For hackers also, it would be difficult to hack or guess your password. So 
this type of information can be used for creating a password but the password should be such it will it should be easy to remember and nobody should get should be able to guess it right okay so this exercise is basically for you people uh, just an exercise so i would request you people to take uh, this information maybe one some of you can take uh, information sakshi given here someone some of you can take pooja someone can uh, take information of saraj and someone can take information of mernal now based on this you can quickly create your own strong passwords right uh, you can post your passwords uh, uh, in the chat box right uh, please do it yeah i got one that's uh, sakshi 60w so similarly same way uh, priya ma'am has done it uh, same way you people can post it quickly i hope i've made my self clear to you people yeah we got few more p0084 red yes quite good J A San San Pro thirty seven yes, R A J fifty two yes. Uh, so you people are getting it now. How to create a strong password? I got Anju forty one. Uh, okay, Mernal at the right thirty two, right? Okay. See here, uh, you have to use the information given in the slide, although. Uh, i'm not uh, sharing it i think it's minimized so i'll just put it one more time and quickly please within 2 uh, 3 minutes use this information to create your own password i hope all of you must have uh, made it now uh, we scrolling down to the comments yeah okay sakshi sak at the rate 166 okay swaraj 25 black right right so i i hope now you got an idea on how to create Uh, passwords which are easy to remember based on any personal information how you can easily create passwords that are strong enough and that that can be easily remember right so uh, this is all i have as far as the cyber uh, safety is concerned we discussed a lot of things we discussed about the threats what are the different threats related to cyber security we also uh, <clears throat> discussed how to deal with it right uh, i told you that the school and the parent coordination is very important in this case it's very important that you make the parents aware about the technology you as a teacher should also be very much aware of what trends are going on what kind kind of apps are available that the students are using what kind of games are are they playing right and i feel that you should in fact you should also play these kind of games just to get an idea uh, how dangerous and how serious these games can be but make sure that we 
um, that any child does not get addicted to all these things right in case you feel in case you feel that any child is involved in any kind of these crimes so it's always good it's always good to share it with your school authority first right report the matter to the principal immediately that if a child is involved in any kind of cyber crime any kind of cyber crime even if bullying is going on even if uh, any kind of threatening or hacking is going on then please inform the principal immediately right because some of these some of these crimes are comes under the cyber law also right so i hope i have made you aware of uh, all this right how to deal with uh, what are the different kind of threats cyber threats and how to deal with it right uh, a very important tool for the student which is scratch let's discuss why it is important here i would first like to quote steve jobs we all know about steve jobs right steve jobs once said that if you want the whole society to think right then we should make each one of them learn how to program each individual in the society should learn to program now why he said that because programming involves lot of thing right programming as we know it involves solving problems it involves analyzing a problem right it involves creativity as to how a problem should be solved quickly so it means that if a child or if a person is learning how to program in return the child is also learning how to solve complex problems in the real life right the child is also learning how to analyze a problem properly and the child is also learning how to solve a prom problem with creativity right so the these three things a child is learning from programming so that's why learning programming is very important and this is the reason why cbsc has inducted a software like scratch in its curriculum this is the main reason because they want the students to learn programming quickly and effectively for the reason which i have already told you that this will help the children in learning how to solve problems with creativity and how to analyze problems now why scratch because we, there are a lot many programming languages python is already there in cbsc icsc has uh, java we have other options also cb uh, c and c++ languages also there but why they opted for scratch the reason is because cbsc wants that programming should start at the junior level only now if you tell a fourth or fifth class student to learn c or c++ that would be quite difficult for the children so it's always good that we start with something that that generates interest among the students also they learn it right easily and they also learn the technique of how to program so scratch provides all these things to the student it tells the student if a student learns to program through scratch the student gets to know about what programming is the child is learning programming while creating different games because we know that uh, children are fascinated with games right so they learn uh, to make games in scratch right they make projects like this uh, share animation projects they also create animation projects in which they create stories and all right so they are now creating fun projects so with all this they are also learning the basic concepts of programming so that's why i know that and i'm sure uh, students in your school also must be showing a lot of interest in learning scratch well these are the reason this is the basic reason why it is so popular because on one hand the child gets to make wonderful projects like storytelling uh, and games and all 
and the, on the other hand the child is also learning about how to program right so let's start with the contents we have introduction we have history we have objectives and explanation some bibliography is also there so let's start with what scratch actually is we all know scratch is a visual programming environment now let me first make this clear to you what visual programming environment is those of you who, if you have ever used python or you might be teaching in your school python uh, now this programming language python in this you make a program simply by writing the commands in the interactive mode or in the script mode right there are no characters animated characters there are no buttons there there are no menus there there is no drag and drop facility right but in a visual programming environment functions like buttons or menus or drag and drop clicking everything is there in the visual programming environment so this visual programming environment basically gives a very good a clear picture to the student that what all things are involved in making a program right i feel personally i feel that writing text commands for the student and learning text command for the student is quite difficult but if you put all these commands in a way that uh, they are presented in a visual form to the student they feel lots and lot of interest related to the uh, language and one such uh, programming language is scratch now here let me make it clear to you that we cannot or we can never compare scratch with programming languages like c c++ and python for the reason that c c++ python and java are also used for serious level of uh, application development software development website development scratch is only here for making the students learn how to use programming tools right it's for learning scratch is only for learning we cannot create a um, serious level of programs out of it i mean uh, you cannot sell a scratch programs to another company maybe or you cannot create a website out of it that's not possible but yes a uh, small program small projects can be made out of it and uh, they are this is called a visual programming environment for the reason that lots of menus and lots of buttons and drag and drop facility and click uh, clicking facility action related events are available on this right now this is basically the history of the scratch language right it all started in 2003 mr resnick is basically regarded as the founder he developed this language in the mit media lab and the first version was released in 2006 later on uh, this this version was available to the public in 2007 the first version was scratch 1.0 and now we have scratch 3 and now scratch is basically uh, overtaken by microsoft now earlier uh, mr resnick had developed this now scratch has purchased the license oh, sorry microsoft has purchased the full license of scratch now they are distributing this language scratch language on their official web page uh, and there is a microsoft store also scratch is also available on the microsoft store so you can either download it from the scratch website or you can download it from the microsoft store right now what are the objectives primary objectives right for scratch now first thing is i told you in the beginning only it helps the student in learning what visual programming environment is the students get to know how they can interact with various programming tools and these tools are made available to the student in visual form right <clears throat> now intro to programming with multimedia this is a wonderful concept and helping the students in learning programming very quickly because students take lot of interest in multimedia multimedia in the sense in graphics in animation in sounds 
So in Scratch, the students get to learn about programming concepts using multimedia. So students take, this is the reason why students take more and more interest in learning Scratch as compared to other programming languages. Because much, much and much multimedia is available for them to explore, right? What they can do with uh, Scratch is they can uh, face storytelling, music making, they can make games also. What they learn in programming is they learn about concepts like objects and attributes. This concept is widely used in different languages like C++ and Java. Those of you know C++ and Java, um, they know very well what objects and attributes are. So Scratch gives them an introduction to the students that what objects and attributes are using different animation characters like sprites. Uh, sequence and repetition. Sequence we all know in programming, all the statements are executed one by one in a sequence, right? The same is with Scratch. In Scratch, we keep different blocks one after other, and these blocks are executed in a sequence. So now the child here is learning that, okay, in programming, we write instructions, we write commands, and these commands are executed in a sequence one by one. Repetition is all about looping. Those who are into programming, they know it well what looping is, executing a statement again and again. So the same concept is learned by the child in Scratch. We, those who have a little exposure to Scratch, they know that uh, block name forever. Forever is used in Scratch for running the loops, executing the loops. And then, of course, we have conditions. No programming language is complete without conditions, if else statements. So the same blocks are introduced in Scratch to help you, to help the student understand what conditional programming is. Event-driven programming is very important. Event-driven programming means that if you click on a particular button or a menu, then what will happen? So event-driven programming deals with this, that if an action is performed by the user, let's say, click on a button, then what will happen? So same thing is learned by the student in Scratch. They learn about event-driven programming or how it works using different blocks. Input, output, no programming language is, language is complete with the input, output operation. So in Scratch also we learn how to take inputs and we learn how to take the outputs. Now these were the primary objectives. Now let's talk about the secondary objectives. Uh, increase student skill with the computers. In Scratch, we know we make use of a mouse, right? A left mouse button, uh, right mouse button, double click, single click, we drag and we drop, right? We do a lot many things with Scratch. So basically when they are using Scratch, their um, computer skills are also improving. Since they are making use of the mouse, they are making use of the keyboard, right? So their computer skills indirectly are also improving when they are using the Scratch. Increase student interest in programming. Yes, of course, I told you because Scratch is basically used for teaching programming. And here, programming is taught to the students in a visual format, right? They interact with various uh, sprites, animation characters given in Scratch. They deal with various blocks that are available to them in different colors, right? And moreover, in Scratch, they can also make fun projects like they can create their own games. They can create their own animation-based stories. So this is the reason the students take more and more interest in learning Scratch. Because once they get an idea that using programming, we are making such wonderful projects like we are making our own games, we are making our own animations, right? So they know, they get an idea, okay, okay, using programming, we can do this. Then if we learn more about programming, we'll be able to do much more better than this, than what we have learned right now. So it basically creates an interest among the students about programming. Fun projects, I've already told you. Uh, they also learn about basic mathematics also while using Scratch. They learn about Cartesian coordinates X and Y, we know that. Distance computation is also learned by the students. Those who have used Scratch, 
they, uh, they must be knowing it that you need to specify the size of the sprite, the moment, the degree of the sprite, right? Uh, we also change, yes, we also change the degree of the sprite. So the child is also learning about some fundamentals of mathematics. So these are the websites from where you can download Scratch version. Uh, you can also add Microsoft Store here. You can log in to the Microsoft Store using your Microsoft account. And from there also, you can download the latest version of Scratch. Right? Uh, let's talk about, quickly talk about the major components of Scratch. And we all know that the most important component is the sprite. It is basically an animation a character, a picture that can be animated, right? Students love to use more and more uh, Sprite. Uh, in the latest version, 3.0, advanced version of Sprites are available. A uh, lot many additions have been made. And blocks. Blocks are quite important in the sense that programming is done with blocks only. There are different blocks in Scratch with different colors, and each block is used to perform a specific programming task, right? Now, here what we can say is, like in Python, we write different commands. So instead of writing the commands now, we here in Scratch, students make use of blocks. So commands are in text form, and blocks are in graphic form, right? So this is the reason why they take more and more interest in uh, programming. Now, uh, these are some of the blocks given here. You can see the motion block, the looks block, the sound block, and the pen block. Each block has uh, different categories, and each block performs a different function. The motion blocks, we know, controls the motion of the sprite, like within the stage area where the sprite will move or what if the sprite touches the x-axis or y-axis. Same is for changing the looks of the sprite. We have the looks block. Same for adding some sound to the, uh, to the uh, sprites or the animation, we have the sound block. In pen block, we know it's used for drawing. Now, I'll take you to uh, one important uh, slide, just give me a second. Yeah. Yeah. Now, here are the three different versions of uh, Scratch. Uh, let's have a quick look at it. I'm not sure which version you people have used, but let's start with the uh, Scratch 1.4. The previous version, one version is here. You can see here, and we have this. This is version 2, right? You can see a lot many changes here. And this is the latest version we have. We call it Scratch. And we'll have a look and we'll see what all differences are there, right? Now you can see the blocks here are on the left hand side, the stage area, which is this, the cat sprite, this is the cat sprite, the default sprite, we know that default sprite is here, is placed on the right hand side. And then we have different option for editing and editing, adding sprites, new sprites, right? This is for changing the sprite properties. Okay, and this is your white area is your stage area and we have the play button and we have the play button and the stop button. So let's look at it in Scratch 2. Now Scratch 2, you can see the motion blocks. All the blocks are placed in the center, right? Uh, you can clearly see the difference here. Here it was on the right-hand side uh, stage area. Now it's on the left-hand side. These blocks were on the left. In 2, it is in the center. And uh, this, of course, is for changing the uh, properties, right? There are a few buttons and are used for changing the properties of the sprite, for adding new sprite, or for deleting or for creating a new costume for the sprite. And these are this is to deal with the properties. And now here, the stage area is on the left. 
right with uh, with two buttons on the top earlier on it was on the right hand side and in the new version you can see there are again changes there are again changes now the blocks from middle they have moved to they have moved all the block to the left hand side right now the stage is at the uh, right uh, right hand side right and the script area where we will place the blocks is in the center in the earlier version you can see it was on the right side and here it was on the center so many significant changes have been made in every version every version you can see here i've shown you this is one this is version 2 and this here is the latest version 3 right a lot many changes have been implemented and then of course we have a small Slide here where I hope uh, this is a small exercise for you people. Now, can you please identify a few blocks here? Okay, uh, can you identify first? Uh, I would say uh, three blocks here. Can you name them quickly in the text box? First three blocks, one, two, three. Let's not uh, take too much time in this. But first three blocks. I I hope you will be answering this in your in the chat box. Those who have done it, though I'm uh, not sure how many of you have uh, used Scratch. But if you have used Scratch, uh, you can give these answers, right? first the second and the third okay now <clears throat> let me quickly uh, show you how the third version works right version 3 i'll be resharing my screen with you just give me a moment Okay, one of the teacher has answered addition, division, and if then. Vineshwar, yes, ma'am, it's correct, correct, very correct. So you have identified the blocks correctly. Now let me give you a again a small demo of the version three. Please hold on. I'll be resharing my screen. Yeah, now it's visible to everyone. This is the version three, called the Scratch Desktop version, right? And let's see what are the additions made here. This again is the block area. We know that uh, for Scratch programming, we have to place this, drag and drop this in the script area, right? So you can place different blocks one after another. right and then by clicking on them you can create a uh, animation you can see the sprite moving here the default sprite is the cat itself right in the new version you have this uh, button here i hope it's visible to everyone this is used for deleting the sprite so you can directly click here on this bin and you can delete the sprite 
For addition, you have this choose a sprite button placed on the right hand side bottom, right? So you can search, choose a sprite, click on choose on sprite, choose a sprite, and here are the new sprite in this version. A lot many have been added. If you have used the earlier version, you can see the changes. Some are the old one, but with more clarity, right? You can search for a particular sprite from here, sorry, ball, right? Or you can also search from the category. You can just add any sprite you want simply by clicking on it, click and it will be added, right? And then now in the new version, you also have this facility, easy facility now. It has been uh, updated, upgraded. So easily now you can add a backdrop also. So click on choose a backdrop. And let's choose a backdrop for the sprite. Right? So simply now it has become more easy. Okay? So you can handle the properties also from here, from the properties panel. Right? You can change the size of the sprite simply by uh, adding values in the sprite, uh, in the size box. Okay? You can change the direction, that's very important, of the sprite. If you do not wish to change it, you can click here and you can move it. Now, you, I hope you can see here that the direction of this sprite beer has changed from left to right. What I mean to tell you is things have become more easier now, more easier now, right, in the latest version. <coughs> and uh, yes, of course, now a few changes also have been made. That is, if you click on the extension button, earlier the blocks like pen and all were available here in the blocks menu, but now they are not available. They are available as an extension in version 3. For using the pen blocks, use this, add extension button, and you can use the pen extension from here. If you want to use some additional features have been given like this, is an additional uh, feature extension is added to this version is called text to speech right so you can click here and you will have this text to speech place the block here and uh, you can write any dialogue you want right. i'm writing hello how are you no right you can click on it. Hello. How are you? I hope you can hear. Hello. It. How are you? Right? So this is basically text to speech. You can even set the voice tone using the set voice two. Now we can change it. Let's say uh, giant. Click Hello. Here. How are you? Sorry, one more time we'll play. Try something else. Okay. Hello. Right? So you Hello. can see the voice modulation will Hello. also be changed. Hello. So the many other Extensions are also available in the version 3.0. It's more clear now, right, with easy to use features. Drag and drop facility is available. You can search for new sprites. You can create your own backdrop also in the paint if you want. That can also be done. And another good thing about it is available in many languages. But yes, of course, in school we make use of English, right? And tutorials are very good this time in the sense you just have to click on tutorials button and then you 
can see a lot of many tutorials let's say you want to learn how to make a game click on it game of chase and this is how the tutorial will be shown click on the play button and see all the steps will be shown that how we can create this game so once the first step is clear to you then you can move on to the next step by clicking on the next one if you are not clear with the previous one you can move to the previous and then you can keep moving once you have learned one step you keep moving to the next step by clicking on the next part so now we have better tutorials this time in scratch 3 so i would recommend that you make use of this uh, version now but in books i think still it's in 2 point now uh, version 2 so maybe not to contradict it it's always good whatever is given in the books but now soon we kips is releasing new series so in the new series we will be making use of version 3 right and rest is all about uh, how we can save the files we know it well and how to load load it now already there in the earlier version i don't think so it won't be right for me to tell you how to save it because being teachers you already know it well right so this is all i have uh, for scratch right i told you uh, why scratch is important why cbsc has inducted how it helps in teaching uh, programming concepts to the students we also saw uh the difference between the three version version 1 version 2 and version 3 we also looked at some of the features that have been added new features that are added to scratch 3.0 in our books we were using version 2 in the previous book but now this year we'll be using 3.0 so now you in our books you will be receiving scratch chapters or content in 3.0 right Yeah. So thank you, everyone. Uh, this is all I had, Father, for uh, cyber safety and. Uh... On behalf of my bachelor's Vidya Pawan, I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to His Grace, Dr. Joseph Mar Dionysius, Manager Bishop, for his presence and blessing. I appreciate the effort of Father, Dr. Joshi Vargis. of a dio who arranged a series of webinars for the benefit of all the teachers of mgm group i specifically thank the resource person of today's webinar mr abhi dogra for wonderfully presenting today's subject in a simple and effective manner the teachers truly appreciated it i would also like to utilize this opportunity to request the management staff and the principal to organize a webinar on ms office we the teachers of mbbb believe that better understanding of ms office will allow the teaching staff to create worksheets question papers and other academic files with relative ease and comfort this will further help the teachers to maintain smooth transition to online teaching Once again, I thank one and all for making this webinar. Thanks. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Abhishek. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Uh, thank you. Team from Kips. Uh,